Welcome to Crossroads. The Chinese Communist Party is rolling out the production of robots. Now these are designed for a pretty broad array of uses, from working in warehouses to carrying out basic household roles. But there are now concerns being raised that the CCP could potentially weaponize these robots as a kind of stealth army within the United States. Now, similar concerns are being raised around Chinese-made vehicles, notably, not just using artificial intelligence just for automated driving, but also even with the software inside the vehicles. Now, let's start with the concerns around Chinese robots. These robots are reportedly ready to enter the global market, and they're said to have eerily lifelike capabilities, even the ability to carry boxes and replicate human facial expressions. And some U.S. lawmakers and experts are now demanding that these robots be banned in the United States. This is according to the New York Post. They say Jacob Helberg, a member of the influential U.S.-China Economic Security Review Commission, who has played a role in convincing Congress to pass a law this spring to force a sale or ban of TikTok, is one of the loudest voices warning Congress that it risks disaster if it allows the sale of robots made by firms beholden to Beijing. Notice that Halberg said advancements in humanoid technology have occurred mind-bogglingly fast. He said, quote, I think we're 12 months away from a chat GPT moment where the world goes from being asleep to awake on this issue. And notes that as they become more advanced, the Chinese Communist Party or state-sponsored bad actors could use the robots, currently marketed as harmless home assistants and super efficient assembly line workers, to wreak havoc by spying, sabotaging critical infrastructure, or in the most nightmarish scenarios, even physically harming Americans. Now, Halberg told this to the Post. He says, quote, They can strangle someone in their sleep. They can punch a data center and inflict physical harm and destruction of property. And he added that, quote, Ultimately, if TikTok was a Chinese spy balloon in your pocket, Chinese drones on U.S. soil are poised to be a Chinese PLA, People's Liberation Army, stealth army on our land. And he added, we can't allow that to happen. Now, the Chinese Communist Party itself, they're actually trying to roll out a massive line of these humanoid robots. And you might have seen some of them. They include, you know, companion robots. They include maids working in your home. They include things for businesses. Maybe they automate certain procedures with factories or things along those lines. Now, for a while, we've had some of these. Maybe you have a Roomba or you have little items that, you know, walk, go around your house and do basic tasks like that. The next stage of them, though, are humanoid robots, robots with appendages, robots that can walk around or physically do things, robots that have arms and hands and, you know, artificial intelligence running the machine. The concern, though, is what is behind that, what is the software updates, and could they be activated to do something you didn't buy them to be doing? Like, for example, carrying out other operations. And also, what are the sensors? What kind of data do they collect? What are they watching? Where are they sending that data? All of these are becoming real concerns. Now, in terms of these robots they're rolling out, South China Morning Post said this. They said the future of Chinese industry may rest on the shoulders of humanoid robots if the country can meet official new goals pushing mass production by 2025, one year away, folks, and attaining world advanced levels in the technology by 2027. Pretty short-term goal, in other words. They note the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, Beijing's ministry overseeing the country's industrial sector, published a nine-page guideline on its website saying that China's humanoid robots should, quote, realize mass production by 2025. They note as well that by 2027, humanoid robots should, quote, become an important new engine of economic growth in China, the ministry urged. And for the CCP, this is important because they're facing, you know, dwindling population numbers. They're facing an aging workforce, and they don't have the people to fill a lot of these roles anymore. Now, it notes the document required that by the time, coming out very soon, the technological innovation of humanoid robots will be significantly improved. A safe and reliable industry supply chain system will be formed. An industrial ecology with international competitiveness will be constructed. And our comprehensive strength, the Chinese Communist Party, will reach the world's advanced level. 
Now, the threat of weaponized robots, it sounds like it's sci-fi, but it's actually not that far off. I mean, look at the war in Ukraine. We're already seeing this with UAVs, you know, unmanned aerial vehicles. Even with the United States and the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, drones were some of the most, you know, effective weapons we had. The use of unmanned aerial vehicles combined now with artificial intelligence or even partially run by them is the way that new battlefields are shaping. Now, the same ones being sold in stores as toys, the ones your kids can buy to play with, we see some of those same ones being used in Ukraine right now to drop bombs on enemy soldiers. We see right now that the household electronics, in other words, that you can buy and play with are also weapons of war. And the United States and the Chinese Communist Party, notably on that, they're even starting up a trade war right now over UAVs. Now look, on the US side, bipartisan legislation has already been introduced on this issue. Senator Rick Scott, a Republican of Florida, and Senator Mark Warner, a Democrat of Virginia, they have introduced the Countering CCP Drones and Supporting Drones for Law Enforcement Act. This legislation seeks to quote, blacklist dangerous Chinese drone companies, Dodge Young Innovations, DGI Technologies, Autel Robotics, and other CCP-linked drone industry participants, and cut them off from U.S. telecommunications infrastructure. The lawmakers note that these Chinese drones pose a huge risk to U.S. infrastructure because of how much influence the CCP wields over these companies. Because of the Chinese Communist Party's data laws, notably, any data collected by any private company needs to be viewable and controllable by the Chinese Communist Party. Even if the companies themselves are not engaging, you know, willingly in the acts of spying or whatever else, the CCP can access data they collect and use it for that purpose. And the other concern, of course, is that maybe drones using emitted technologies can be activated or have even software updates to manipulate that type of technology for other uses the CCP might try to you know, want them for. Now, DGI and Autel, they control right now about 90% of the global drone market, just emphasizing how big these are. Now, Senator Rick Scott said in a statement about the proposed legislation, quote, drones made in communist China pose a significant threat to our freedoms and security and cannot be allowed to continue operating in American skies. He said that companies based in communist China are at the will of Xi Jinping's evil regime, meaning one of the United States' greatest adversaries has total access to every bit of data collected by devices. He said as well, quote, it should terrify every single American that the Chinese Communist Party, known for spying, stealing, and espionage, could have access to footage of Americans, their land, their businesses, and their families without their knowledge. Now on this though, the legislation would also set up a short-term grant program under the Department of Transportation to allow first responders to replace existing drones and purchase US-made alternatives. Because already US law enforcement, even military in other areas, they use these. Already these Chinese drones are being implemented within you know, government purchases and so on. And the concern is of course that even aside from the stuff you and I can buy in the market, the stuff being used for police or government or other purposes, if the Chinese Communist Party controls 90% of the market, it means that we have to go to them for a core technology used, as it's, of course increasingly becomes common, used within our country. Now, interestingly as well, the Chinese Communist Party on its side is also accelerating this ban although it doesn't seem to be targeted specifically at the UAV market. Instead, what they're doing, they're going after parts allegedly used in military drones. They're going after some of the core technologies. South China Morning Post said this, China on Wednesday, just recently, expanded export restrictions on a range of drones and drone parts with potential military applications, further tightening last year's controls on unmanned aerial vehicles, UAV sales. Now, the list was rolled out, it says, by a range of agencies, including the Ministry of Commerce, China's Customs and People's Liberation Army Equipment Department. It says the measures will take effect from September 1st. Now, it notes the controlled parts include high-precision inertial measuring units, synthetic aperture radar, 
and engines with an output above 16 kilowatts, as well as wireless communication with a range beyond 50 kilometers, or about 31 miles. The Chinese Communist Party, in other words, they're doing this as a kind of tit-for-tat move against U.S. sanctions, right? The Chinese Communist Party, ironically, they're accelerating the U.S. move to break away from these industries that's already taking place. Now, for the CCP side, they're doing it with the reason, right? They're doing it because they're angry the United States is, you know, playing the opposite side of a lot of wars, whether it be, for example, supporting Ukraine while the CCP supports Russia and the Russia-Ukraine war, that the United States is supporting Israel while the CCP is backing, you know, Hamas and the Palestinian Authority and other groups like that. The Chinese Communist Party also has ambitions to overtake Taiwan, to seize it by force, and the United States is creating a kind of defensive partnership around that region to prevent the hostile takeover of Taiwan. And so for the CCP, they view the United States as kind of the system blocking it from achieving its global goals, right? Its process, really, of trying to create this whole Eurasian empire, of conquering other countries by force, forcing them to come to the negotiating table, and agreeing to its terms to alter the world map. The CCP is angry about this. And as the United States sanctions the Chinese Communist Party, puts tariffs on Chinese parts, and talks about breaking away from the CCP's monopolies on core technologies, the Chinese Communist Party is saying, oh, well, you want to make it so we can't sell this in America, we're going to restrict the parts that you need to build them yourself. But ironically, what this is doing is it's actually accelerating the push that's already starting. By doing this, the Chinese Communist Party is accelerating the U.S. break from a reliance on the Chinese Communist Party within its supply chain. Ironically, this is forcing the United States to do what they've been wanting to do and talking about doing for close to a decade now. Because remember, during the Obama administration, they were talking about supply chain threats to our military. The need for us to break away from reliance on Chinese rare earth minerals, Chinese parts used in military applications, and things of that sort by just outright banning it and making it so we can't buy these things, or at the very least suggesting that they could put bans on things that we depend on. The Chinese Communist Party is forcing the United States to either replace things they can no longer buy, or as a type of security to make sure that we can have it in the future, to make sure that they don't ban something we absolutely need, and it is by doing that, forcing the United States to begin either looking to domestic production or creating alternative supply chains elsewhere. The CCP is accelerating its downfall, in other words. It's accelerating the decoupling taking place. It's speeding up the process, forcing other countries to no longer depend on China for core components or materials or anything of that sort. The concerns over the CCP's connections to AI and to UAVs and such it's also now being raised over Chinese vehicles, not just the autonomous ones, but also the ones just connected to the internet. 